five. America and the world since World War II. America is back, looking to the 80s with courage, confidence, and hope. ABC News Special, the years 1945 to 1985. From New York, Ted Koppel and Peter Jennings. Good evening. We're glad you could join us this evening because 1945 to 1985 are among the most momentous years in human history. We're actually in a television studio in New York City, but we are surrounded by the objects. Some people would call them the relics, but certainly the symbols of those times, both good and bad. Now, we know it's impossible to deal with everything here tonight that has touched our lives over the last 40 years, so we're going to concentrate on those most important events that have affected the way we live today. We feel that perhaps the most important event is a continuing one, one that's been around since 1945, the confrontation between the United States and the Soviet Union. Each one of us is part of that ongoing confrontation, whether we like it or not, and that will be our main focus tonight. We'll be hearing the stories of men and women who were there when decisions were made that determine in large measure how we live today. We do hope you'll stay with us. It was the end of the war, the war, back in 1945, and this Jeep is of that vintage. Back in 45, when you spoke of the war, there was no need to explain which one you were talking about. America was not only the most powerful nation in the world, it was, arguably, the most powerful nation in the history of the world. After all, we had the bomb, and nobody else did. That would change, of course, and a lot sooner than we expected when we discovered that the Russians had their own bomb, and when we learned how they got it, the Rosenbergs. That was an espionage scandal that makes all today's stuff about the British and the Russians sending each other's spies home seem pretty tame by comparison. But then we've had 40 years of competition between the West and the Soviet Union. A lot of things have changed in 40 years, but that hasn't. Our music has changed. I don't know about you, but I don't think I know the words to a single popular song today, but I probably know most of the lyrics to just about every song on this jukebox. Bogie and Bacall. They were very big back then. And if you're asking Bogie who, it's probably past your bedtime. Lucky Strike, which had gone to war in camouflage green, was back in its now familiar colors. No filters, of course. That was before filters and before we knew that cigarettes cause cancer and heart disease and emphysema. 
This was the time when the Soviet Union was not yet our enemy and Germany and Japan were not yet our friends. By the end of this decade, Americans would be fighting in another war. But in 1945, war was the last thing we wanted to hear about. It may be difficult for more recent generations to understand the jubilation that swept America with the news that the World War II was finally over. This picture in Life magazine captured that mood, VJ Day, an anonymous sailor kissing an equally anonymous nurse. And this is where it happened, Times Square. People poured into the streets by the thousands to celebrate the end of the war. Forty years ago this month, the war was over. It flashed on there, the Japs have surrendered, have signed the, the uh, surrender papers. Life magazine photographer Alfred Eisenstadt was in Times Square that day. Until I saw that sailor and he grabbed every woman inside. I met the girl coming across the street right here, grabbed her, put my foot before her, right down. So what was later described as the last good war was behind us, and we came home by the shipload. More than nine million Americans who wanted simply to get out of their uniforms and get on with their lives. And the boys are home again, all over the world. America demobilized to the bebop of Dizzy Gillespie. And got back to the business of courting and making up for lost time to the strains of Frank Sinatra. The girl that I marry will have to be. College education was free for most of these new veterans, courtesy of the GI Bill. There was a housing problem, but that problem was transformed into an opportunity by a builder named Levitt. We believe that every family in the United States is entitled to decent shelter. For a vet, a new Levitt house was less than $7,000, no money down. America was sick of war and the tools of war. It walked away from them. Navy ships were mothballed. Surplus aircraft destroyed. America was eager to get on with peace. The theory was that we wouldn't need all those conventional weapons anyway. After all, we had the bomb. Stuart Symington was in the War Department at the time. The first job that I had as Assistant Secretary of War was to go around and close up the uh, bases all over the world, which was a terrible mistake based on later developments. Dean Rusk was also in the War Department. Now, in retrospect, it's clear to me that we subjected Joseph Stalin to intolerable temptations through our own weakness. And it has taken us many years to pick up the pieces from that great mistake involved in our demobilization after B.J. Day. 